The new Spotify update is so bad that it ruined all of our beautiful themes that we use to make Spotify look good. So today I'm going to show you how to downgrade Spotify correctly, keep it downgraded, how to apply themes, the older version of Spicetify, and actually how to configure everything. So to start off, I hate Spotify so much I haven't even logged in. But you need to uninstall Spotify. So press the Windows key and type in add and click on add or remove programs. Then search for Spotify, click on it and click uninstall. Now, once you uninstall it, you need to close off add or remove programs and you need to press Windows and R and it'll open up this run menu. You need to type in percent add data percent and press OK. Once it opens up, make sure that you do not have a Spotify folder in your roaming folder, which is the current folder. If you see Spotify in here, just click on it and delete it. Then click on app data up here, go to local and look for Spotify in here. If you see Spotify in one of these folders, you need to click on it and delete it. You might also have another Spotify folder hidden in packages. So click on packages, scroll down, and you should see something like Spotify, ab.spotify. Literally, if you see a Spotify folder, just pull out the sniper rifle and shoot that down by deleting it. Now, you want to go to the first link in the description. Now, this link directly links to the correct version of Spotify, but just make sure it's 1.1.39.612 and click the download button. And once it downloads, you want to open it and install it. Now, once Spotify opens up, you do not want to log in. You want to move on to the next step, which is pressing the Windows key and R and typing in percent app data percent. Press enter and it'll open up this roaming folder. Now in the Spotify folder, we want to open it up and we need to click the view button, click file name extensions, and we need to create a new text file. And we need to actually call it Spotify underscore new dot exe. Press enter, press yes. We need to right click it, click properties and click read only. Click apply, press okay. Now we need to click on app data up here, go to local. Then we need to look for Spotify we need to check if there's an update folder. If you see an update folder, delete it. Then you need to actually create an update folder. Make sure you name it with a capital U. You need to right click it, click on properties, click on security, and you need to click edit. Then when this edit page pops up, you need to click on system, click deny on full control, go to your user, do the same thing, and do that for every single option and click apply. Press yes, press okay, and press okay. If there's any errors, just keep on pressing yes or press cancel. Now that blocking Spotify updates is out of the way, we need to go to the second link in the description, which will be a paste bin link. Once you open up the paste bin link, all you need to do is go down to the raw paste data and you need to copy all of this. And now we need to open PowerShell as an administrator. So press the Windows key, type in PowerShell and click run as administrator. Press yes. And once it opens up, you want to right click. Now it's gonna tell you, please download Spotify version 1.1.39. Do not log in. We've already done that. So press OK. And it will start downloading Spicetify, the new version. And we need to downgrade the new version, which requires a little bit of trickery. Now, another window will pop up saying, please copy the contents of the Spicetify zip file to spicetify.cli. I'm going to show you how to do that. So you need to go to the third link in the description and you will see old Spicetify files. You need to copy that URL and go to it. And once you go to it, you need to click on the Spicetify 1.2.1 Windows x64.zip and you need to download that. Now, once it downloads, you want to open it up. Now, once you have it open on one screen, you need to right click on this PC and click open in a new window. Drag that to the left so it's easier to see. Click on your C drive, click on users, click on your username, and you should see Spicetify-CLI. You want to open that up. You want to delete all the files in there and you want to drag the files that you got from the zip file and put it into that folder. And after you're done that, you can close off both of the Explorer windows and press the OK button on PowerShell. Now, first off, you'll notice that your Spotify restarts, but you also see this pop-up window saying, please drag the themes into the themes folder. We need to actually download the themes. So go to the fourth link in the description and you will see a GitHub link. If GitHub decides to update the themes for Spicetify version two, then I will have a Google Drive link in the description that you can also go through. But Google Drive is pretty straightforward, just download it. But on GitHub, you want to click the green download button and click download zip. Now, once it downloads, you want to open it up and you want to open up this folder and you want to right click on this PC and click open a new window, rearrange the window so it's easier to see, go to your C drive, go to users, go to your user and go to dot spicetify. Now we need to open the themes folder and now we need to drag all the themes into there. So press control A and drag it over. Now, once all the themes are copied over, go to your taskbar, click on the little prompt thing that showed up for PowerShell and press okay. 
And once it's done, you will see Spotify is spiced up and you'll also see pause here, that's completely fine. All you need to do is minimize PowerShell and log into Spotify. So now that you've opened Spotify, now it's themed to the dribble-ish theme. How do we customize Spotify using Spicedify? Well, in the description, there are a couple of useful codes that you can use to change how things look. Now, mind you, it might be a little hard to figure out the names or the color schemes, but fortunately, that GitHub page that we went on has everything. So, for example, we are using the dribble-ish theme, so I'm going to click on the dribble-ish folder and scroll down, and you will see screenshots. Now, the different names above each screenshot show the color scheme that it represents. I'm going to focus on Dracula. So to apply the Dracula color scheme, all I need to do is first off, copy this code from the description, put it in a new notepad thing, and change the scheme name to Dracula. Now, all you need to do is you just need to copy this code that you modified and right click in PowerShell and press enter. And what it will do is it will refresh Spotify and reapply the Dracula color scheme. Let's say you don't like the look of Dribblish anymore and you wanna figure out how other themes look. Well, if you go to the GitHub and you go back to the main page, you can click on any one of these folders and just see how the theme looks. Some of them look meh, and some of them look pretty nice. So it's up to you to choose which one you want. After a little bit of debate, I've decided that I want to use the matcha theme. So I'm gonna show you how to apply the matcha theme or any other theme that you want. So go to the description again and you will see this changing theme code here. You want to copy it. You want to put it into a notepad and you want to change the theme name to the theme name. So it was matcha and make sure to match the case of the name. If it has a capital M, your theme name needs to have a capital M, just like shown. So let's copy all this code, go into PowerShell, right click, and you'll see, well, we restored back to normal Spotify. It looks old and ugly like it always does, but I forgot to press the enter button at the very end. When you paste into PowerShell with right click, you may need to press enter for the last line to go through which also gives us a little bit of a dramatic effect. Now, once you press enter and Spotify restarts, you'll notice that you now have a themed Spotify. Now, the only con that I've found so far with this kind of old workaround is the fact that your username is not your normal username. This is actually your Spotify ID, and it's just an aesthetic issue. I don't personally know how to fix it. If someone does, I'll pin the comment, but as it is now, you kind of have to deal with it. Now, I've made a made-up scenario here just in case something goes wrong, and I just want to point it out to you. So, to start off, if you look at your GitHub and you notice that your theme looks a little bit different than what you've had, specifically these icons don't have text anymore, and your playlists have images behind them, there is a way to fix that, and that's just caused by the dribblish extension once again messing up my whole entire life. So, all you need to do to fix it is go into PowerShell, and you need to type in Spicedify Config Extensions Dribblish dot js with the minus sign just as a quick reminder i already have that in the changing theme code here just so you won't have to deal with it but sometimes it can happen so if i press enter and then i apply it you will notice that once spotify restarts my theme will match exactly how the github looks so that's how you fix it if you do have that type of issue some of you might have already tried to install the Dribblish dynamic theme and you got this error at the bottom. There's a really easy way to fix that and all you need to do is go to your file explorer, you need to go to your C drive, open it up, go to users, go to your user file, go to .spicedify, go to themes, scroll down and look for Dribblish dynamic. You need to copy this JavaScript file and you need to paste it into extensions. I've already done that. So once you copied over the extension, and you'll notice I also have this in the description, if you have some other weird themes that are working, you need to copy the extension over like we already did, but you now need to run a command spicedify config extensions and the extension name. So we're going to copy that. We're going to paste it into our nifty little notepad and this extension name, we actually need to go back to that extensions folder. And this is the name right here, dribblish-dynamic. So all we're gonna do is put that in there. And once you put it in there, just copy this code and you need to paste it into PowerShell and press enter. And once you do that, you need to type in Spicedify apply. Now that Dribblish dynamic looks normal, and once again, you can use color scheme to turn it to light mode or dark mode, you might try to change your theme and you'll still run into issues. And that's because, like I said before, with our little changing theme code here, we have Spicedify config extensions, dribblish.js with a minus sign. If you are going from Dribblish dynamic to another theme, you need to change this to Dribblish-dynamic, and you need to copy this code and paste it and change the theme. And that's because, once again, you need to turn off the extensions that you turned on 
when you go in between themes. And the only themes that have extensions on them are Dribblish and Dribblish Dynamic. Now let's say that Spicetify V2 finally gets proper theme support, or you just want to go back to normal Spotify. There are a handful of things you need to do first. To start off, you need to go into PowerShell and you need to type in Spicetify Restore. And once you type it in, Spotify will turn back to normal. Next up, what we need to do is we need to go to our file explorer and we need to first off go to this PC, C drive, users, no text to speech, and delete the .spicetify folder as well as the spicetify-cli folder. Now, once you do that, we need to actually re-enable updates on Spotify. So to do that, press the Windows key and the R key, type in percent app data percent and press enter. And once you press enter, it'll open up this roaming folder and you need to open up Spotify, go to that Spotify underscore new file that we made and delete it. Then you need to click on app data up here, go to local, go to Spotify, and you see this update folder, we need to click on it, then right click and click properties, go to security, go to edit, and we need to turn off each checkbox for every single user or group that's on the system. And once you do that, click apply, press OK, and press OK. And for one last good measure, I would actually uninstall Spotify and reinstall it using Spotify either on the website or through the Microsoft Store. This is because we just want to remove any residual old files and just get back up onto the normal update path of Spotify. And that in itself is how you fully theme Spotify, despite it being the new UI and despite all the code updating and stuff. Mind you, at some point, Spicetify will finally have proper themes for version 2 of Spotify, and this will allow us to finally make it significantly easier to work with. But as of now, this is kind of the band-aid fix we have to deal with. Anyways, if you have any issues, feel free to throw it on my new Discord. It's not new, it's it's a couple months old, it's like a child now, and it's crying, and it, it, it's whining, and oh god, please end the suffering, please.